What is the purpose of your life? Do you have any purpose? Do you have a goal in your life that you want to achieve? Or have you received a calling or an assignment from God? Do you know what God wants you to do with your life? Those are very, very important questions. And a lot of people, they don't ask these questions. What am I here on earth? What am I doing? What is the, what is the reason of my being, my existence? And a lot of people, and especially today, I am speaking to the to new generation, young generation. You need to ask what your purpose is. That's so important because once you know your purpose, then you will ask God to give you the f tools, give you the strategies, give you the methods to fulfill that purpose. What is my purpose? Ask yourself, what, what am I doing? What am I doing here in church? What am I doing at school? What am I doing? Why am I here? And I ask these questions all my life, especially until I came to Christ. A lot of people are lost. Jesus Christ came to this world with an assignment, with a goal, with a mission. He said, my purpose is I came to seek and save what was lost. He, has a, he had a mission, and he still has a mission. He didn't just come here to show us the way. He didn't just come here to do the miracles, touch people, heal the sick. Everything God does have a purpose. Everything. God doesn't do anything without a purpose. I do things without a purpose. You do things without a purpose. God does not do anything without a purpose. If he heals someone, there's a reason in that healing. If he performs miracles, there is a purpose behind those miracles. You know the ultimate purpose is, and I believe it is my purpose too, for him to be glorified and be known on the face of the earth. Him to be glorified, this is the ultimate purpose. You know, when I started giving my testimony, which I started giving my testimony and speaking about what God had done in my life, I was a very, very new believer. And my first years of Christian walk were just a joke. They were a joke. It, I, was not I was trying to be serious, but I didn't know the word of God. I was still in a mess. God cleansed me some, but some things were not right. And I didn't know how to surrender. I still had my will. I didn't give up my will. I was still rebellious. And God is so merciful. But one thing I know, the day that I received Christ Jesus, some things really left my life immediately. And some things God had to work in my life. I was coming from, I am coming from a false religion. Worship a false God. And so many lies and deception were in me. I had so many strongholds and bondages. God had to work in me through the years. But one thing I remember the day I got saved, I started giving my testimony. Jesus Christ is real. Oh, he did this. He saved my life. I was going to commit suicide. And that day I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He opened my eyes. And I started sharing this with people. And I remember one day I was going to speak at a big event. And for me, a former abused Muslim woman never had a voice to speak in front of 5,000 people. I was nervous. I was praying. And let me tell you, I was not all together. If you ever wait to be perfect to serve God, you will never serve God. And I was just willing. And seriously, my, it was in my heart, Lord, what do you want me to say? How do you want me to preach? What do you want me to share? That was the true intention. Maybe I was not all together, but I had fear and reverence of God. And I asked him, Lord, what do you want me to say? How do I minister? Teach me. And I remember with the inner voice, Listen, God gives you an assignment, and he is your teacher. He is your guide. With an inner voice, he spoke to me, and he said, every time you speak, 
I want you to do two things. It has to have two things in it. Everything that you do in the church, in the, to the body of Christ, or even outside, two things. I want you to be very careful. One of them, everything you say has to glorify me. Glorify. And the second thing, edify. Everything you say has to edify. Glorify and edify. If it is not glorifying, it is not edifying, don't say it. And I took that to heart since that day. You know, I'm a very funny person behind, outside of the pulpit, outside with my friends, if you ask. Clean funny, innocent funny. God gave me my childhood, but the moment I come here, I never forget those two instructions God told me. Glorify, edify. If it is not glorifying, it is not edifying, don't say it. And I tried my very, very best in all these 16 years of walk with Christ Jesus to follow these two rules when I was preparing to speak in front of anyone. Is it glorifying, I would ask? Is it edifying? So God has a purpose in everything. And I, I want to generalize that. When we do anything, counseling, ministry, preaching, teaching Bible class, any kind of fellowship that you are putting together, is it glorifying? Because if it is glorifying, Jesus is the center. Is it edifying? It is, if it is glorifying, most of the time, I'm telling you, 99.9% .9 it is edifying. You know why? Because when he's glorified, he will draw all men closer to him. When he draws all men, they are already edified. So the first goal always has to be glorifying Jesus Christ. Bringing glory to his name. That's so important. So God is, today I am breaking down chapter, Joshua chapter 1. And telling you about a man, ordinary man, with an extraordinary assignment. A military leader, leader of a nation, to conquer kingdoms. God is giving him an assignment. And he is his teacher. He is giving him instructions. Don't you love that? So here is when Joshua receives this calling, he also receives this instruction. Verse 8, keep this book of the law always on your lips, meditate on it day and night. So this means book of the law, my word will be in your mouth and in your mind. You know, we talk about renewing our mind. It's so important. We talk about the battles in your mind. If you are in depression today, if you are going through depression, if you are going through demonic oppression today, hear me carefully, or you have suicidal thoughts, listen to me, please. There is hope in Christ Jesus. The reason that you are going through what you are going through, you are separated, and you need to reconcile. You need to be connected with God the Father, with his love. So when you are always speaking the word of God pro through proclamation, his word, reading it out loud, listening. Listen, if you are with me at home, you know, my daughter is here today. She can testify. I always have the audio Bible on. Is that true? She's going, she's saying yes. Our audio Bible always, if I am going to, to, for a walk, I have my audio Bible on. If I am going to the gym, I have my own. You know, faith comes through hearing, hearing the word of God. I need to hear to have faith. Some people, day one, you pray for a gift of faith, and which is okay with some, but it is an easy way out. Because some, you want somebody to come impart something to you, somebody to come inject something to you, and you leave, and it's a quick fix. No, some things are work. And you want to have faith? You listen to the Word of God. You listen to the Word of God. You listen to the Word of God. This is what God is telling to Joshua. You know why? Because Joshua is going to face giants. Joshua is going to conquer kingdoms. He better have faith. If he doesn't have faith in his calling, forget it. He is already defeated. Because the opposite of faith is fear. If you have fear in your life, you don't have enough faith. If you have faith in your life, you don't have fear. And God is telling him, you got to keep 
reciting, you're going to keep speaking the word. But it is, listen, if you're only reciting, which I did it when I was a Muslim, I recited Quran again and again and again. That's one thing. But now God is also telling him, don't only recite because it is religious activity. It is good reciting it, reciting the right thing, repeating it again and again is good. But there's another thing that completes that and becomes a faith, becomes powerful tool in your life is meditating on it. You know what meditation, the word meditation is so taken out of context like many other words, words and become part of yoga or Eastern practices. But meditation is truly from the very beginning of the Bible. Meditate. Look at the book of Joshua. We are talking about one of the first books in the Bible. Meditate. And this is a good word from the biblical perspective. Meditating means you think about it. You not only think about it, you think deeper in it. Meditating means your all intention is to understand. Meditating means you are not only eating the food. Reciting is eating it. But meditating is digesting the food. When you start meditating it, you are digesting. The vitamins, the proteins, and everything are going to distribute it to the right places when you meditate. When you are meditating on it, your focus is in the right place. God wanted Joshua to meditate day and night. I know I read uh, biographies of great men and women of faith, and one of them is Jonathan Edwards. That man would fill the auditoriums. At that time, there was not TV, there was not this, that, but he was so powerful. There was no social media. And first time people start experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit at Jonathan Edwards' meetings. And they call it holy faintings when they were slain in the Holy Spirit. They call it holy faintings they were, when they were slain in the Spirit. And then that man was experiencing things with God so different than the other generations before him. And he had resolutions, over 70 resolutions of Jonathan Edwards. Write it down, Google it, you will find his resolutions, and they are amazing. One of the things that got my attention, one of his resolutions was, he would never pass a scripture, verse, without wrestling with God to understand the scripture. He would never rest until Jesus revealed himself through that scripture to him, through the Holy Spirit, to give him understanding. And I learned that from Jonathan Edwards. I learned to stay in one verse and meditate on it, asking the Holy Spirit. You see, the difference between Christianity and any other religion is having the Holy Spirit. They can read Quran, they can read other literature, but they are reading it without the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit, which gives us understanding, gives us revelation. And when we are going to recite even something or read the Word of God, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to lead us. Holy Spirit, this is always before any Bible study, I pray this for me, any devotional. Spirit of truth. This is how I speak. Because Holy Spirit is called Spirit of truth. Give me understanding. I want to understand this. And I am telling you, God is so faithful. Every time I ask, sometimes I need to wrestle. I gain an understanding of something that may seem so difficult to understand. And there are passages, especially you guys know, in the Old Testament. There are things that are hard to swallow and hard to eat, hard to digest. But I ask the Lord, Lord, tell me what it is. And this is called meditating in his word day and night. There are Muslims write to me, attack me, and they say, we read the Bible. And, you know, it, there's nothing in it. This is this. And I tell them, you read the Bible with a critical spirit. You didn't read the word of God. 
seeking the guidance and understanding of the Holy Spirit. Because if they really, truly sought the Lord, sought the Word of God, I believe God is so just and faithful to give them the understanding. This is what we miss sometimes in the church. Not sometimes, most of the time. We know how to recite. We know how to quote. This is why the churches are filled with people memorize the scripture here. And they can quote the scriptures to you, but they do not meditate in it day and night. The moment when you start meditating on something, let me tell you, your mind cannot think two things at the same time. No, you cannot. We don't have that kind of ability. You can only think one thing. This is why I call multitasking is overrated. There's no such a thing multitasking. People, people look for workers, multitask. No, you leave one thing, you start doing the another thing, and you go back to another thing, and which, is, which, which sometimes make you fruitless. You are not productive. Somebody comes, interrupts you, gives you another assignment, you do that, and now you go, no, you have two hands, two feet, two eyes, one brain most of the time. And you can only take care of one thing at a time. And same thing with our thinking. Do you think if you meditate on God's word day and night, you can think anything else? You can think pornography? You can think about lusting after a woman? You can think about so and so told you or slander you, gossip about you, said all kinds of things about you? No. You can, why you say meditate? You focus on one thing. You fix your eyes on one thing. And God is telling Joshua, you have a big task. You're going to fight a physical battle, Joshua. But I am giving you a huge tool. Before any sword, God could give Joshua, just like you see in the movies, Lord of the Rings or this, I didn't see it, but I saw the previews. All this miraculous supernatural power, swords and the rings and this. God could give, do you think God couldn't give him that kind of sword or a machine gun or a bomb or something to just erase the enemy from the face of the earth? But God started giving Joshua spiritual tools, spiritual weapons to fight. He said, obey. Obey all the law written in it. And my word should be on your lips day and night, all the time, always on your lips. And you need to meditate on my word, day and night. Wow, if you look at it, if you go to a general of an army today and say, you know what, you are going to win a battle and you have all this army and everything, but doesn't matter, and you have all these guns and weapons and bombs and so forth, doesn't, God doesn't care. God is telling you, just take the Bible and keep proclaiming and meditate on it day and night and you're gonna win. God's foolishness is wiser than man's wisdom. God's foolishness is wiser than man's wisdom. You know what happened? Joshua, one nation, Israel, who were, who were their occupation was agriculture, taking care of sheep and cattle. This was the culture of Israel. This was their occupation. When Joseph entered into Egypt, Pharaoh asked him, about his family, what do you do, what your family do? They, he said, they are farmers. They have flocks and they take care of cattle and sheep. This is what they do. And he gave them an area that they could, they could take care of their business. They were not fighters. Other nations were fighters, they were not. And God is telling Joshua, you are going to conquer kingdoms. In the physical, but with supernatural power of God. This is what we need today. This is what America needs today. This is what, what the Western world needs today. When ISIS is coming, when other terrorist organizations are coming with their might and strength to put fear in you because they are bullies, intimidators, to come and kick you out of your own land. Take the freedom that your forefathers provided for you and the army officers provided for you with their sweat and blood. Take that freedom and with that freedom to destroy your freedom and your country. And if you want to go with your earthly weapons, I am telling you, they know how to fight. They know how to conquer. They know. But if you take God with you, 
And if you meditate on his word day and night, it, it becomes your lifestyle. God is not giving Joshua religious instructions. God is giving Joshua, if you want to be a leader of a nation, this is your lifestyle. This is going to be your lifestyle. It is going to be cons in consistency. You're going to be consistent in your work. Not you're going to be one day on your knees and the next day in the shopping malls, one day you are worshiping me, only Sunday to Sunday, and then another day you are out there in the world. You need entertainment in your life because you don't have supernatural and you watch the supernatural in the movies. You watch Mission Impossible. You watch Spider-Man, Superman, Batman. You know why? Because you love to see supernatural or out of ordinary, extraordinary at work. But if you walk with Jesus Christ, if you walk in an obedient life, if you seek the Lord in everything you do, if you meditate in His Word day and night, you are going to have that life that you are watching other people are having. And it's not a dream for you. One man comes like Rambo, and kills 1,000 guys, and he walks out, it is in the movie, with one scratch, something, and he's a hero. One man with God is majority. One man, one woman with God is majority, and it's not my word, it's the old preacher's word. It's not my quote. But if you walk with God, you're gonna be that Rambo. You are going to be that Superman. You are going to that be, be that person, not receive glory to yourself, give glory to God, because without Him, you are only one person. But we, with Him, you are one billion. This is what God wants you to do with your life. And this is what God was telling Joshua. This is how you're going to fight this battle. Psalm 119, 11. I have hidden your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Blessed is the one who does not walk in the step with the wicked or stand in the way of the sinners. Take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. Delight. And who meditates on his law day and night. Bless, this is a blessed man who meditates. Lord, I want to know what do you mean by this. I want to know. I meditate in his word day and night and lunch and breakfast and snacks. I think of his word. Muslims come, fanaticals, radicals, they attack me. We're going to kill you. We're going to destroy you. We are going to do this to you, to your family, to your country. Every day bullying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of them. And I, every night, I have perfect night's sleep without any medication. I meditate. I, I go to bed and I think of the Word of God. I think of that. There are so many other scholars, theologians, so many people. They memorize the Bible. They know so many words. And I know what I know. I cannot even compare how much I memorize in comparison to those giants in theology. But you know what, whatever I know, I meditate on that word. I meditate. I meditate and I pray big prayers in my bed when I am laying down. I pray big prayers, foolish prayers. I pray, I say, I want to be like Elijah, Lord. I want to be like David, except the adultery part. I want to be like Daniel, Lord God. I want to be like Joshua, Lord Jesus. I want to be, I say things like this every night. I want to meditate. And maybe I am Rahab, Lord, and my past is like Rahab. Maybe I am that Moab, Moabite woman, Ruth. Maybe I am like Esther, like an orphan. My family didn't care one time. But you can't turn me into David. You can't turn me into Daniel. You can't turn me anything you want. I am available. This is what I say in my bed every night. Every morning when I wake up, I am not eloquent in speech, but Lord, I need you. I am open to everything what you have for me. I don't want to live a mediocre life. I refuse to live a mediocre life. I don't want to live a normal life. It is boring. I don't want to live a boring, comfortable life. I want something greater, and I will fight for it. I will give my life to it. I will work for it. I want something greater.
Please, Lord, use me. I pray dangerous prayers. I said, whatever it takes, whatever it costs, here I am. I said, I want to see the Muslim world get saved, entire Muslim world. I want to pay the price. I pray dangerous prayers. And you know what? In one man's lifetime, Joshua's lifetime, you know how many kingdoms Joshua conquered? 31 kingdoms. He cleans the land from Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, all of them. He cleans the land. 31 kingdoms. You know how many countries in the Middle East? 22. Do you know how many Muslim countries in the world? 50. And one man in one lifetime conquered 31 kingdoms. 30, it, is, it is possible with God. It is possible with God. But what I need to do is to read the instruction manual and obey, meditate, and proclaim. So that can become part of my DNA, my system. It should be in my system. And you know, I live a purposeful life.